Welcome back, everybody. It is time to go over this month's deck tech for popper slivers, green-white popper slivers. We've made some improvements, some additions, uh, stemming from your guys' comments and suggestions. Uh, I got some really good feedback on some of the past videos and some stuff I've been wanting to add into the deck, and I just never cleaned up like the sideboard, things like that. Uh, so we did that this time, so I'll go over it with you guys really quick. Just going to be a short video letting you know where the deck's at. And then, hopefully, if I'm doing my uploads right, later today we'll have uh, a match with it. Uh, I'm finally back recording from being away for like a week. Just had my third kid. And we'll probably go into that more in the next match video. But, um, I know you... Wow, this music got really loud for a second. Now let me turn that down a little bit. There we go. It's like blaring in my ear. So, anyways, we'll go into that later, uh, but here is the newly updated deck for green-white slivers. Let me run over some of the new additions we've got. Um, Benevolent Bodyguard, first of all. Sacrifice Benevolent Bodyguard, target creature you control gains protection from color of your choice until end of turn. Uh, so, some good protection on a stick. Not uh, going to play off of our slivers, but that's okay. It's there for a body. It's there for maybe protection from edict effects. And I think this will come in handy against the mono black control, things like that. Uh, even burn, we'll be able to toss them aside, say protection from red, save our creatures a little bit more. Um, to include two of these, we've got, I took it out of the sideboard. So we've got two of these in the main. I don't think I want to go further than that. I want to see how it plays. Um, I know this is a well-used card in popper, so I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. And I think it will come in handy a little bit for us. Uh, regular players have played it. Sidewinder, two Sentinel. I might drop one of those to add in another uh, Journey to Nowhere. I cut back on one Journey to Nowhere, so we just have three now. I was playing with four, and it actually worked pretty good. Uh, so I dropped to three. I think that's okay. But if we ever want to cut a Sentinel and bring in another Journey, I'm okay with that too. Four Vines, four Zinyu, four Viverlance, four Muscle, four Predatory, two Spinnerets. Uh, I kind of want to almost go to three on the spinnerets every time I'm up against uh, a match with flying creatures that I need to start blocking. I can never seem to pull into it how I want to, uh, which is unfortunate. But I think two is a, a healthy number for what it does. It's just uh, I never be I'm never able to draw into it. I, I kind of even want to maybe keep some in the sideboard, like one more in the sideboard just to add one more in, in case we're in a match where we need it. But Again, I'm fine with this where it's at. I'm pretty happy with the sideboard now. I cleaned it up quite a bit. The newest, biggest addition from Modern Horizons. I got this suggestion on uh, Instagram, I believe, or was it YouTube? I forget, but shout out to whoever suggested it. I didn't realize this card existed in Modern Horizons. Can't keep up with all of them. But we have Winding Way. This is replacing Lead the Stampede. It uh, costs two mana, one green and one colorless. It's a sorcery. And basically does almost the same thing as Lead the Stampede. Choose a creature or land. Reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand and the rest into the graveyard. So, we're always going to be naming creature, obviously. Uh, unless there's some weird circumstance where we need land. Uh, but we'll be choosing creature and we'll be able to dig four deep into the top of our library. And hopefully pull a bunch of creatures into our hand. Now, Lead the Stampede. You get to draw five deep for three mana and pull those into your hand. Any creature cards from among them into your hand. So it's a little bit cheaper, might be more mana efficient for us and still have a decent effect to refill our hand efficiently. So I'm excited to play with this one and test it out. I ended up getting some paper versions of it too. We've just got three in the deck. I'm happy with where Lead the Stampede was with three in the deck before. So I think just keeping three in here is fine. Uh, mana base is pretty much normal other than the additions of some cycling lands. Uh, I've been wanting to throw these into the deck and I never got around to getting them in until now. So we've got Tranquil Thickets and Secluded Steep. Uh, so we can cycle, throw it out of our hand if we got too much land, cycle it for another card. Same thing with uh, Secluded Steep. Uh, we'll be able to cycle just fix our mana a little bit more if we start flooding out or if we need to try to pull into something else we're not quite happy with what we we get this is good for late game too if uh we pull into it and we've already got our mana base i mean four is kind of where we want to be at a healthy four uh land on the battlefield you're going to be able to play anything in your hand 
and be able to drop like two creatures a turn, which I like to do when we play Popper Slivers. If you're dropping two creatures a turn, you're creating a nasty board state, uh, as long as you're refilling the hand and everything. So four is right where you want to be. Uh, so if we do end up drawing these into these in the late game, we can cycle them out, get into some better creature cards or something like that, which is very good. Uh, I was considering putting in a colony garden. I, I do have it, but I ended up taking it out I felt like we were playing with maybe a little too many tapped lands. Uh, we've got four Blossoming Sands that come in tapped, and then two of these. So six altogether that come in tapped. And Slivers, we want to be able to dump the hand fast. Uh, I don't want to be slowed down too much. And Colony Garden does give us a 1-1 creature when it comes into the battlefield, which again helps with any edict effects or things like that. Uh, but it does come into the play tapped. Um... We've got Benevolent Bodyguard as an Edict Help and Protection, so I ended up just removing the Colony Garden. We may throw it back in. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but this is where the deck is at. I'm liking it so far. I've not had a chance to playtest it whatsoever, uh, so hopefully the match I play later today will showcase how this works. Um, so over in the sideboard, a couple new additions, but uh, let's go over the ones we kept in. Hollow, still in, although I've not had a chance to even utilize it properly yet in-game. Sunlance, good card. Gutshot, still in here. Natural State, still in here. Armadillo Cloak, needed, definitely. Uh, I took out Nihilus Spellbomb, is that how you say it? Nihilus Spellbomb. I don't know why I ever had that in there. It was the wrong choice for Graveyard Hate. I should have just went Relic from the beginning. I don't know why. I think I just, you know, net-decked. The Popper Slivers deck and just threw it into MTGO Traders and grabbed everything. So I've been wanting to put Relic in for a long time. We've got Relic in now. Uh, tap it, target player exiles a card from their graveyard. Pay one and exile the Relic and it exiles all cards from all graveyards and we get to draw a card. So overall, very good card. It's used in all varieties of formats. Uh, very good card for common. And uh, I'm excited to finally have that one in my in my uh, sideboard here. Another protection spell that I've been wanting to try out and I've been looking at and eyeing is something I can swap in and out with, let's say, Benevolent Bodyguard. If I'm not liking Benevolent Bodyguard or what have you and I just want to play my Sliver Creatures, we do, or if there's a matchup where I just need more protection from something. We've got Apostle Blessing. Uh, it's a Phyrexian mana type, so we can either pay white or pay two life and one colorless for this instant. Target artifact or creature you control gains protection from artifacts or from the color of your choice until end of turn. So very much like Benevolent Bodyguard, it's an instant and it only costs us one in two life basically. So even if we're getting a little mana screwed and we don't have mana to play vines for some reason or whatnot, uh, or if we just want to utilize our mana a little bit differently, Apostle's Blessing can come in and we can pay the two life and just pay one colorless and we can get protection from a color. So I have two of them in the sideboard. It's something I want to try out and bring in on certain matchups, maybe like Burn, uh, and see how well it works. But I'd be more than willing to even bring this into the main, possibly. Maybe that's silly. Maybe we've got plenty with Vines and Benevolent Bodyguard at this point, but I'm still testing stuff out. Um, so this is the sideboard. Pretty happy with it. This is the main board. Pretty happy with it. I am looking forward to trying it out and see how we do. But let me know what you guys think and how you think uh, cards like Winding Way is going to play out in this. I haven't seen really anybody use it in Popper Slivers yet. It's not on any deck lists I've seen uh, on any top eights or anything. Maybe that's saying something. I don't know. But I, I've read the card. I feel like it's pretty worth it in the end. So let me know what you guys think about uh, Winding Way, if it's going to be useful to us or not. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to finally clean up this deck that took me forever to clean up sorry guys i know it took me a while but i was listening taking in all the feedback and uh doing my own research too and what i think will be good for the meta and everything right now and i think this will be good where it's at so hopefully uh you guys stay tuned we're gonna have lots more games with these i'll also give you a sneak peek over here if you haven't seen already we're gonna be setting up some gruel slivers that's green red slivers for popper some uh, deck I've been wanting to make too. I've been wanting to uh, splash the red and play with all the cool red popper cards that we got. Uh, really fly in fast and hard at our opponent with some slivers with haste. Um, 
and I'm working on that deck right now. It's not super complete. I want to do some more research on it. But for now, green-white is definitely, in my opinion, the more powerful Slivers deck in Popper. So I want to stick with this as the main course. And every once in a while, we'll have our side dish or a little ending dessert with some Gruel Slivers just for fun and wacky shenanigans. Because uh, who doesn't like playing red at the end of the day? I know it can be annoying, but everybody likes a little burn in their life. So we'll be playing that uh, eventually here, too. But if you guys enjoy this Popper Slivers videos and you want to see more, stay tuned for more. Leave a like and please subscribe because um, it shows me that everybody's wanting to watch and continue watching the Popper Slivers content. I've been enjoying it greatly. And again, just as a clarification, I don't claim to be any type of person that is good enough or professional enough to give like fantastic opinions on uh, the meta or popper or magic even itself i make tons of mistakes i'm still learning the game i'm still pretty new and fresh to the game uh, i just enjoy making the videos for content and i enjoy playing the deck so i'm still learning with you guys so there will be blunders and mistakes obviously uh, but i just wanted to reiterate though that i know i've said it in previous videos but we've gotten a lot of new subscribers so just setting the precedent there i'm not perfect and I do not claim to be very good, but uh, we do have fun. So, again, uh, leave a like and uh, subscribe for more future videos. And thanks for hanging in there while I had my break, while my wife gave birth. We'll talk more on that later, and we will see you guys in the next video.